Good morning. Wow, today is the last day of 2020. Well, let's say goodbye to 2020 and say hello to Happy New Year to 2021 tomorrow. But today, let's finish well. And I'm going to continue to talk about the Holy Spirit. Uh, good Happy Birthday, Holy Spirit Part 2. Now, let me read from uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. You know, because just reading it will minister to you. Oh, Holy Spirit God, as we read this text together in New King James Version, speak to us, minister to us, that we would finish well this year with you. Walk along with us, Paracletos. Come upon us and give us dunamis, the power. Stay in us. Fill us today. What was filled yesterday was leaked out already. So fill us today, Holy Spirit, that we will be victorious. Have revival daily in Jesus' name. Amen. This is word of the Lord, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. Or 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord, rushing in one accord, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire and a set upon them like a dove. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with, of the tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Wow. Wow, wow. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful imagery of the birth of the Holy Spirit among us, tabernacle among us, in us, through us, walk alongside us, parakletos, the comforter at work. Now, I began to talk about yesterday that how we make fundamental error when we keep on insisting that the tongue, speaking in tongue, unknown language, is a sign of salvation. And that's the salva you know, salvation symbol that we make error because it is a sign, not the. So there are three kinds of tongue. When we talk about glossia. The word tongue is written in glossia. Right? Well, obviously, it literally means tongue, right? It is a member of the body, organ of speech. So that's literal translation, tongue, right? So obviously, when we interpret the Bible, it says, when, when they began to speak with other tongue, doesn't mean they all of a sudden had other people's tongue, right? Physical. So I hope you oxymoron to translate Bible that way. So nobody translated that way. Although, the denotation, definition of the word is tongue, physical tongue. So there must be something else. Well, of course, the tongue is a language that describes a language or dialect used by particular people distinct from that of other nations. Just like I speak in English now, but I'm fluent in Korean and Korean is my higher language. So you, some uh, non-Korean people say, oh, what did he just say? I just said the same thing in Korean. And so if you are the monolingual, and they, the European calls American monolingual people, English only, because in Europe, they speak second, third languages quite fluently. You know? And so the, if you're a monolingual American, uh, English, English only, and then hear me break out into Korean, like, oh, I didn't understand that. That was the dynamic, actually. Right, happening, and there are some in, in, there are some people trying to uh, insist that unknown tongue did not really happen. It was just gathering of Jews from the, all over regions because of the, the you know the, the, the celebration, and then 120 of course from many different nations, and although they are Jews, the followers of Christ, when Holy Spirit, when they were filled, they just were using their own dialogue, so it was a known tongue, but it wasn't spiritual, spiritually inspired. Nonsense, because uh, the, the, that's not what the scripture is saying. Right? So there is a dialect, of course, you know, the Chinese different, English different, all that, Japanese different. Right? Guess what? Many years ago, many for almost, since, I've been preaching since 18, so almost 40 years ago, I started preaching and I would lay my hands on people, and then they break out into unknown tongue. Unknown tongue is the third one, which is the uh, uh, intercessory tongue. You know, you, you, you know, I received my gift of tongue 
because I was praying at age 18, 40 years ago, 41 years ago. I was filled with the Spirit, and I really want all the people that I love to experience this Holy Spirit. Or I encounter Jesus, I want people to encounter this Jesus. So it was the summer uh, of... Uh, uh, so, 79, September, and so it was probably summer of 80, right? Or 80, yeah, I think it was 80 or 81. So, 40 years ago, I was in uh, Unitas. Uh, it was a Christian fraternity group. Uh, in my room, I had a list of people. In the back of my Bible, I had a list of people that who I want to share the Christ with. And then I was crying out, you know, I was... I was praying to God, you know, Jesus, please meet my sister, please meet my brother, please meet my father, please meet my mother and, and, and all the relatives and all my friends and please meet Mike and, you know, uh, Oyobi and all that. And I was praying, praying, and they were shut down. And, and I, I freaked out. What was that? You know, because I was praying in English, I was praying in Korean, and then I broke out into this unknown language. I freaked out because I was taught until that point the tongue is from the devil, from very conservative Presbyterian church. Good church, but just, just had a wrong theology on that one. Good pastor, but he just was fundamental Presbyterian, tongue died because Holy Spirit died, cessationist, 2,000 years ago. So I freaked out and I went to my spiritual leader at the time named Dennis. He changed to Paul. Uh, because, yeah, when Paul Yonggi Cho, uh, God told him to change your name from Paul to David, so it became David Yonggi Cho. David Yonggi Cho gave his name Paul to Dennis, who later becomes right-hand man to Yonggi Cho. So Dennis now becomes Paul Kim, but it is a long story. But anyway, so he was, uh, he was in the same Christian uh, fraternity called Unitas. And um, I went up to his room and said, Hyung, which means older brother in Korean. I think I just received the, uh, the, the prayer from the devil. I think I'm influenced by devil. Why do you say that? I don't know. I'm saying stuff that I don't understand in English or Korean. It's just coming out as I was interceding for people to be saved. So why don't you say it? So, oh, man. I said, oh, shara haba sari, alarabatarabai, shi, alarabatarabai. And he said, oh, that's just intercessory tongue. That's unknown language. The Holy Spirit, when it come upon you, will give it to you so that you intercede for those people because you don't know how they're going to be saved. You don't know how they're going to share the gospel. You don't know what they need in order for them to encounter Jesus. So that's what you're doing there. Really? Wow. So I went back to my room and I've been praying in gift of tongue, daily basis, without ceasing for 40 years. Wow. Think about that. See, I found that list that the list I had about two, all these people that I want to share the gospel many decades later, I think it was like 25 years later or something, 30 years. It's because, you know, what I would do is I would go through different Bibles, you know, every year, sometimes different, two, three different Bibles a year. And I had a collection of many, many Bibles. So that, what I used in 40 years ago, that Bible, I picked it out. It was, I opened it, the list fell off. And then I was looking at the list and counting up. Wow. My dad, my mom, my sisters, my brothers, and wow. About 200 people. Wow, they all became Christian. It was just like, it was like one or two people still haven't responded by that time. Oh, it's crazy. See, that's what the work of the Holy Spirit is. It, inspires you and and gives you a brand new heavenly language that you could intercede you could intercede right you know i'm gonna park my thought here and then gonna spend some time actually go through a uh, gift of tongue 
and I'm not going to follow the my commentary at this point although yeah it's good commentary um, because it only covers um, in one page or two page and, and I think um, I don't want to rush through things I don't know do you have to rush through things to finish anything <laughs> I, I just want to park my thought here and then maybe share with you and then re-educate myself about the gift of tongue as it was inspired by the Holy Spirit right um, so we learned that tongue gloss, glossa that's what is written in Greek the glossa began to speak with other glossa as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance it could be literal tongue it could be dialect it could be heavenly spiritual language and all three are uh, uh, valid expression of the work of the Holy Spirit I told you that I broke into unknown tongue 40 years ago but what about the the known language see brother Dennis or Paul passed away three weeks ago that's unbelievable I, I'm still shocked you know beginning of end of November weekend of Thanksgiving he was only 64 I mean he really wanted to give one check of one billion dollar in one check for kingdom cause or at least that's what he told me when I was young that was his life goal wow what an incredible life goal right some people try to make millions but he said I want to give away one billion dollar in one check he passed away I don't know if he did that or not uh, I don't know but at least that was his attempt and uh, he was telling me because we you know and so now he's now mentoring me about gift of tongue he said that when he was just a surfer boy uh, in Guam and he was surfing all day he was a bum surfing bum but then he encountered Jesus you know, the way that he encountered Jesus was fantastic because you know uh, he met some African-American man in Guam and he was a deacon at a, some Baptist church and picked him up on the you know the, the beach and said boy you need Jesus you come to my church so because he was never mentored by anybody like him the, the big huge black man because he trusted him enough or loved him enough to invite him to his church so he said that he was a you know really shirtless <laughs> surfer boy little young kid went to this Baptist church and then during the service time this black man gave him the offering plate and said you collect offering during the service and and he was so excited because he said maybe I'll oh, collect the offering and run out from the back back door you know and then he's like he doesn't even know me why does he trust me with play full of cash that's when he gives it like to the Lord and and then he does a lot of crazy stuff right um, so he did a lot of evangelism and that's when actually uh, during you know there was a boat people from Vietnam they were literally they were, they were running away from war and they were literally on a boat landing at Guam think about that this fisher fisherman's boat whatever small boat they were all coming at Guam an island and they were landing and so they said hey let's go witness to these people of course this Vietnamese the boat people they don't speak English and so he and his uh, 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 white friend he said that's not what I said that's what he said his white friend uh, he knew for his entire life best friend and he knows that he he and he and his friend just became Christian and they were walking toward the shore and this literally the Vietnamese people will come out of the boat and out of the mouth of this white friend some strange language <laughs> something like that right <laughs> I'm just making fun because I don't speak Vietnamese well guess what all these Vietnamese were freaking out and they will all rush toward him and kneel before him 
and cry and they are now pray in Vietnamese, cry, crying out in Vietnamese. So my, my friend Dennis freaked out and later found out that his friend who never spoke a word of Vietnamese were sharing the gospel in Vietnamese, in perfect Vietnamese, so much so that everybody were convicted and they gave their life to Jesus. And they were filled with the Spirit. I know some of you who are taught that Holy Spirit died and, you know, John MacArthur group, oh no, that cannot have happened. Right? No, that's from devil. Yeah. Devil uh, spoke Vietnamese so that this Vietnamese boat people could accept Christ and live as Christian. That is fantastic devil, isn't it? Wow, if devil's like that, the Satan will fire him. <laughs> to argue that it's the devil, to argue that that didn't happen, it's kind of, to say the least, stupid, right? Anyways, so that's what happened. And, and even in my own life, when I, I remember 2007, 13 years ago, I ride my motorcycle across America. I landed at Al Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's like 700 member, 99% white church. As I preached my message, I was laying hands over the people. And one lady, the Holy Spirit said, she will now intercede for a nation. Tell her, be a nation taker. So I said, woman, be a nation taker. I mean, she was a large woman, you know, large middle-aged woman and then she started breaking out into Mongolia see I've been to Mongolia twice was it twice or once but I've been to Mongolia <laughs> because my sister was a missionary to Mongolia for 20 years and so I, I've been to Ulaanbaatar and then traveled with her. so I know what Mongolian sounds like especially seeing a Mongolian movie on Genghis Khan, life of Genghis Khan, there are a lot of Mongolians. There was, and I and but I wasn't hundred percent sure. But I told her, sister, you're now praying Mongolian. Take Mongolia as your nation. Intercede for the nation. She was freaking out and she was so happy. And then next person to her was a very old lady, petite, small white lady, grandma, basically, in, probably in her mid seventies. I pray over her, and the same thing happened. Holy Spirit said. Be a nation taker, woman. You know, I said, be a nation taker, grandma. And then she broke out into perfect Korean. Hanani maboji, hanani maboji. And then, uh, whoa, I know Korean. Ever since then, laying on my hand, some people break out into Japanese. I learned Japanese. Two years in, at, at Berkeley. So I know Japanese. And some lady never spoke Japanese, broke out into fluent Japanese. Some lady I pray for over. Broke out into fluent Chinese. Like, I never learned Chinese, but I watched enough Kung Fu movie to know what Chinese sound like, right? <laughs> Matter of fact, when I was in San Francisco, I was a salesman, sales manager at uh, Golden Gate Office System on Gary Boulevard, right? Very close to Satanic Church on Gary Boulevard. Uh, uh, I would get a call from a lot of Chinese clients. And, you know, and this one lady in particular calls me in Chinese. Because, you know, Golden Gate Office System, they think it's Chinese owned. It broke out into Chinese. No, no, I, no, no. I said, lady, I don't speak Chinese. I don't speak Chinese. So she insisted that she speaks Chinese. So I got kind of ticked off. So I broke out into my fluent fake Chinese. <laughs> you know, it's like Korean uh, fake Chinese. And then there was a pause. And then there was broken English. She said, I'm sorry. I do not speak Mandarin. <laughs> no, no, she said, I'm sorry, I don't speak Cantonese. Because what I was saying was, sound more like Cantonese, I guess. Yeah. So I'm quite fluent in fake Chinese. But point is that the three kinds of tongue, whether you be physical tongue, unknown language, intercessory tongue, or the known language, the three things coexist. And three things are still valid today. As it happened, like a mighty water waves, they were rushing together in one accord in prayer. Ah! Holy Spirit, bam, they touched down and they broke out into unison prayer. 
And then people call that Korean style prayer. No, it happened when Holy Spirit was birthed out of heaven, came down upon us at P, and walked among us, para, in us. And we became the temple of the Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit tabernacle among us when we became church. Wow. Praise the Lord. Well, if you want to learn about tongue in more detail, so tomorrow I'm going to go over a little more on Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. But until then, have a victorious revival daily, day to day. Amen? See you tomorrow.